Welcome to Will Mega TV, where we cover topics from hip hop, reality TV, black consciousness, entertainment, politics, you name it. If it's making noise around the globe, we cover it, share it with you, and give our own unique perspective. Today, I'm going to share a special interview, an exclusive interview with you on none other than Cecil Moltison. Who is Cecil Moltison, you ask? Cecil Moltison is a former high school basketball player at Overbrook High School. He played for the Overbrook Hilltoppers. Yes, long before they were the Overbrook Panthers, they were the Overbrook Hilltoppers. From there, he went on to play for none other than Temple University, varsity basketball there, left there and went on to play professionally for the Washington Generals, traveling the globe with the Globetrotters. From there, the Eastern professional basketball team, and then finally, the head coach for Overbrook High School, where he coached arguably the greatest basketball player to ever touch a basketball, Wilton Norman Chamberlain. Yes, I'm talking Cecil Moseson. Cecil Moseson, yep, he signed this basketball for me long um, before he passed. Cecil Moseson is our subject today in a three-part series. Before you check out part one, part two, or part three, I'm simply going to ask you to click subscribe, click like or dislike. I don't really care. That's up to you add a comment in a comment section and if you're really feeling me if you're really feeling me cash app will mega that's dollar sign will mega that's dollar sign w-i-l-l-m-e-g-a stay tuned so coach um who are you i know you're a coach uh, but tell us who you are okay when i was 22 I was a student teacher at Overbrook High School, and uh, I was recommended to be the coach one week before school opened. And uh, I was in phys ed at Temple, played at Temple, had a scholarship at Temple, played with the Harlem Globetrotters, became a principal in Tredyffrin East Town, met President Reagan in the Rose Garden, coached at Upper Moreland, William Tennant, Archbishop Carroll Girls, and taught in the Philadelphia Community College. So what year um, were you asked to coach at Overbrook High School? What year was I coached in 1952 uh, for three years. Okay, cool. Um, so how'd you even get involved in basketball? Did you, did you play basketball? I played games? basketball at Temple and uh, had a scholarship at Temple and was in phys ed at Temple. And uh, I was doing student teaching at Overbrook where I went to high school and played there at Overbrook. What years did you play at Overbrook? I played in 1946 and 47. Who, who was your coach? A fellow by the name of Juan Weiler. It was an all-Jewish basketball team that won 20 straight basketball games. The, um, did you guys go on to win the championship, or how was it set up back then? We played in the championship and lost by one point to Bartram. Wow. And the, my best friend is the one who beat us. Wow, what's his name? Uh, Gil Shore. The, um, so as you were playing back in 1946, did you have any clue that you would one day become the basketball coach or the best basketball player ever? Never dreamed of it. It was like a miracle. Uh, they didn't want to hire me during the summer. They interviewed about 100 guys. And one week before school opened, they called me and said, would you like to be the coach? Well, I didn't sleep anymore for that month. The, um, <clears throat> so you become the coach of Overbrook High School. And tell me about how you decided to pick the, the guys on your team. Well, it was easy. Some of them played the year before. And uh, they were all friends of Wilt, but they were all great athletes. One of the athletes was Ira Davis who became the Olympic top seven jump champion of the United States and coached at LaSalle and track. Another one was Mel Brodsky, who 
played at Temple. And another one went to the Harlem Globetrotters. So they were all pretty good players. Now, there's been much said about the size of the, the original Overbrook High School gym. Talk to me about the size of that gym compared to gyms today. The gym was very small. Uh, two-thirds of the size of a normal gym. And uh, I played on the junior varsity. And to make the junior varsity, you had to dribble up and down the court and make 50 baskets in five minutes. And it took me about four times before I finally made it. Okay. So was the court still 10 feet high back then, though? Yes, the baskets were. Um, folks made a lot to do about how high Wilt could jump and how long he could jump. Uh, how high? How long? Well, Wilt could jump 12 feet high. The baskets were 10, and he could get up to about 12 feet. And uh, he was a high jumper and a uh, 440 and 220 track star. And uh, he, he could really go up and down the court like in four dribbles. Wow. So the, um, the rumor, the rumor, you're, you're, you know, there's not too many people who are around to witness this. There's a rumor that Wilt Chamberlain could jump and would uh, dunk. Yes, he did it a couple of times. He didn't do it frequently, and he was a good foul shooter in, in high school, but he could do that. And, and, and could you say exactly what he could do? Because most people won't be able to hear my voice from the film. Yeah, he, uh, he would stand at the foul line and shoot the ball, and if it missed the basket, he would follow it up and dunk it. Wow. The, um, <clears throat> The changing of the rules, could you speak to how he impacted the rules of the game? He's the only professional athlete who changed rules in the game. He changed the free the foul shot lines from 6 feet to 12 feet, and uh, he changed the dunking rule and the blocking rule because he would do it every time. The, um, now, there's a story you talk about, about how he got kicked off the team. You kicked him off the team. But we, we're going to come back to that because I want you to have an opportunity to go fully into that. Did Will have girlfriends in high school? What, what was the fanfare like? Well, he, he had a lot of Jewish girlfriends, <laughs> uh, but he didn't have 20,000 of them. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, what was his hardest challenge on the court? There were no hardest challenge. Wow. He could do everything. He, uh, were there any players that, that, that he played against that presented any challenges for him? Well, the only one that may have presented a challenge was the center at West Philly, who was six foot nine. But West Philly lost six games in three years, and all six games were at Overbrook. Wow. Wow. Um, there, um, he, there's stories about him playing or, or working for Red Auerbach. In the summer, is that, that so? Yeah, we worked at Country's Country Club. I worked with Red Auerbach coaching the players there, and uh, Will was a bellhop at uh, Country's Country Club. How old was he then? He was 17. And so is it true that he played uh, against the number one college recruit uh, that went to the pros while he was there? Well, the, all the uh, summer country clubs had teams from all the colleges in the country, and he played against the best. Wow. Um, <clears throat> talk to me about the Quaker Town Fade. Does that ring a bell? No. Okay, the, uh, where did, what was playing for the Quaker Town Fade? Uh, uh, Semi-protein while he was still in Overbrook. I've seen some newspaper clips. I'm not familiar with that. 